Yes, ma'am. Uh, I also don't have children in school. My grandchildren are in private Christian schools. Mm -hmm. And I, I assume they fall under this too, mm -hmm. since if the Catholics are, the well, your private Christian schools? Um, every school obviously has the choice to adopt or not adopt the standards. But again, the problem for them will be if they don't um, teach the standards, then their students, when they try to enter college and take the college entrance exams, the SAT and the ACT, they won't fare well because they won't have taught, they won't have learned the standards. Now, some private schools and some individuals assume, well, we're going to teach much more than the common standards, so they will easily still do well in the test. The problem is, uh, with these uh, tests, and the SAT and ACT are also going online, they'll be computer adapted, and with the math, you have to explain the process. So the very odd math that they're teaching um, that parents can't help their children with, um, it doesn't even matter if the answer is right, if you can't explain the process and the way it was spoke, taught through Common Core, then you won't get full credit. You'll get partial credit for the right answer, and partial, um, partially you will get it wrong because you can't explain the process. The other part of my question is, if we are successful in getting this repeal legislation and all, what is the alternative? Do we go back to where standards and curriculum before Common Core? What's the alternative? Well, there's several alternatives. Yes, we could go back to what we had before. In fact, we could go back to the ones we had before and the ones we had before. <laughs> because the ones we had before, the PACT, if you remember PACT, yep. nobody liked PACT. You know why? Because they were some of the best standards in the country. And they were rated as such. And the reason the teachers didn't like them is because when No Child Left Behind came in, then they said, okay, well, it's not fair because we have these really high standards. Other states have lower standards. It's not comparing apples to apples. So that's another reason that they really bought into this common core thing. But in addition to that, the um, No Child Left Behind allowed states to alter their standards. So we went from packed to pass, which were lower, so that we would be better compared to other states. So in, in theory, if we wanted very good standards, we would go back to packed. Um, and you know, there's some discussion about whether standards-driven education is really what we need at all. You know, we didn't even have standards before the 90s. We, when, when you and I went to school, um, most of you, I think, are, are, are my age or, or somewhere near there, um, we learned a good classical education. And teachers and schools had the flexibility to choose what was they felt is in the best interest of their students as far as um, their achievement. And, you know, that's, I think, is the biggest problem is We've got the federal government involvement. Before we had federal government involvement in public education, we had in this country um, what was envied by most of the world as far as our education system. We had a great education system. Uh, the federal government became involved, and then we came in with the standards. There has been a push to do national standards for decades, and they just they have not been successful until now. They just keep repackaging it. If any of you have followed education policy over the years, it started out as outcome-based education, um, goals 2000, school to work, you know, and, and then every time it failed, they'd go back and they'd come up with a smarter way to do it, and then they got pretty smart with Common Core, and they, they were effective in 45 states. Now, there's a lady on the back row that had her hand. I just, I, I just wonder where it ends, because if you're starting to adapt, curriculum in the high school now to pass these tests that, so the, I'm talking about the math game. Right. So the, I think I've seen it, the new math, I've seen it a little bit, it's very confusing, but, um, so then, you know, so the, the student does well on the SAT and gets into a four-year college and then he wants to be an engineer, so you get adapt the classic engineering curriculum to this new standard that's not no. summer. I'm just saying it won't work. It, it's, no. it's ridiculous. No, it, it won't work. <laughs> you know, some of the school districts are saying that they're still going to offer advanced classes, um, but I don't see how they're going to do that because they won't be tested. And again, we know that the districts are evaluated by the test, and the teachers will also be evaluated by the test. So you know your resources and time are going to go there first. So, you know, that's yet to be seen. And on the other end of the spectrum, 
We don't know what's going to happen with, um, with children with IEPs and learning disabilities. No one knows. Those are two unanswered questions. And when you ask the experts, um, they don't have the answers either. All right, just a couple more uh, questions. I was just going to make a statement. I was, you were at the same meeting we were at Horry County when the teachers got up in, order, in support. And it was so apparent, I've been a teacher for 35 years, that teaching, they're not concerned with excellence at all anymore. And when they made the statement that, well, if he doesn't learn it in third grade, he can't do the time table, so then he'll go to fourth grade. And I sat there and thought, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. There just didn't seem to be any criteria at all for the children. Well, I hear a lot. I hear a lot too that they're they're passing <coughs> kids through grades oh, yeah. without achievement, and and some teachers tell me that they're not allowed to to grade any papers in F. Everybody passes. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's getting really absurd. A very quick comment, Sherry. You passed over the name Pearson several times. Mm -hmm. But you care to address who Pearson Technologies are, educational technologies are, and what their impact is, especially in terms of textbooks? Yes. Um, Pearson is the largest textbook company in the world. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many companies that fall under Pearson. Almost every textbook company you can imagine is owned by Pearson. And so there is really even a larger uh, connection to a uh, international education goal through Pearson.